my mom had to call my husband <laughs> God knows. to ask my husband that ah, is this guy a veggie i'm like mommy ah, ah. <laughs> oh, <I'm> like, <laughs> ma mm. finally when we got married on the saturday night we tried yeah. it but the thing says stop there yeah. you're not gonna happen <laughs> i'm not joking we stayed for almost one month i was asking about to be are you are you are you inside are you <laughs> hey, hey, God. hi guys welcome back to the channel my name is victoria i am daily for if it's your first time here thank you so much for joining me for a little subscriber you know i love you you know i appreciate you so much thank you for always and always coming back all right so welcome to another interesting episode of the unashamed series i want to thank you guys so much for spending who has been you know watching this series leaving your beautiful comments encouraging the people who have been coming online um i am so grateful for as many who have you know identified to um, be a part of this series thank you so much god bless you as many that have come before prior to this i am so grateful to you guys thank you so very much okay so today i have a very interesting lady here yes <laughs> to talk to you to talk to us also about you know her own journey into um waiting okay so of course we all uh and this is not just for those and i always say that this series is not necessarily for people who are only waiting to you know to have sex before marriage it could be anything and this could be helpful in so many ways um so yes yeah, so she actually i actually met her on uh, well she messaged me on instagram yes and then i went through her content and i i love the content that she creates i love how she uses a platform to encourage people who are in you know certain life journey and yeah so uh, her in, uh i have oh well the person i have here is Ulua Shim. she's going to introduce herself um shortly um but she has uh, an instagram page and i think all of you guys should check it out it's called waiting purposefully it's on instagram so you guys please look that out all right so don't let me talk too much um show can you please just tell us a little bit about yourself okay thank you so much this is victoria <laughs> Hey, yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. Let me tell you, because I've been watching you for a while and see uh -huh. you face to face. Hey, <laughs> you know, we see thank on, you. On, on, on YouTube, but see you like this. Uh -uh. <laughs> what God cannot do does not exist. Does not exist. Oh my God. <laughs> thank you. Thanks oh my a lot. God. Thank you for the great work you do. Thank you for encouraging women um, thank to you. wait, you know. Even those that has maybe they, that have made mistakes before. When I'm sure when mm -hmm. they watch all of this your videos, it just gives them more um, strength, <laughs> you know, to wait again. <laughs> yeah. <know? laughs> uh, my name is my <laughs> my name is Owolaju Oluwa Sheo. Um, okay. I have a um, um, IG page that is um, titled "Waiting Purposefully." Um, so i am one of those ladies that waited okay and we are still waiting <laughs> um thank you so much for sharing that and i really love that you know you're using your platform and the voice that god has given to you to share your own story as an encouragement to people um so let us get right into this interview so basically uh you i'm sure you're familiar with this series i love you to share your story about you know growing up waiting where did the mindset of oh waiting to get married you know to have sex before you, waiting to have sex when you get married where did that mindset start from you know what were the challenges you faced and all of that if you can just start us with that and then you know we'll continue okay so i remember when i was young we attended mm. this church that is called bible life church so okay uh, so the bible life church is like deeper life you know uh, mm. so i already have this mentality of that kind of lifestyle my okay. mom will always say it you know saying it with her full chest that oh when i me when i got married i got married as a virgin and all of that kind mm. of stuff she will say it and say it so i mean so the the where where did this thing about virginity start from for me it was for my mom because my mom was okay. always ringing it in my ears that ah me as your mother i got married i remember when um we got married and then my my mom had to call my husband <laughs> God knows, to ask my husband that ah, is this guy a veggie i'm like mommy ah, ah. Oh, I'm like, <laughs> ah, ah. See, ah, 
is she a virgin? My husband said, oh, yes, so that. So my, my husband <laughs> explained to her the situation. Ah, uh, so, you know, <laughs> she's that, she, that kind of... She, Ah, my own mommy, she has a word in that kind of thing. <laughs> so <laughs> she called and <laughs> she was always saying it to her ears and all of that. So for me, mm. that was how I started um, or had the notion of waiting um, before mm. waiting to have sex after um, wedding or after my getting married. And it wasn't okay. easy, honestly. The whole, um, the whole growing up and having um people around you that has had sex you know i remember i had to move to on those states because we stayed in lagos for a while i mean i grew up in lagos to so maybe 2014 no no 2009 so we had to move to mm -hmm. ondo where we were in ondo right i was with my grandma uh mm -hmm. guess what in that ondo you will see a child of 10 15 11 12 years the child is already the, the child is already pregnant, pregnant and mm -hmm. she's already giving birth. I'm not telling you something that is far, something that is in my vicinity like this. I'm saying I somebody know. that when I visited Ondo, I was in secondary school and they were in primary school, and I'm maybe doing my um wire or something. I see that this this ladies they have become mummies. So mm -hmm. uh it was just the mind and the help of God. All of those journeys. I can't say that I, I wasn't faced with challenges. I was faced with different people. They would come and say super story. And I know that it was those same stories that they told other girls that made them fall. But in my mind, I actually wanted to um, wait and, you know, wait till I get married before I finally do the do. Okay. So you're saying that, you know, your decision to wait was mainly because of your mom sharing her own experience, you know, with you and all of that. Um, I w I'm just wondering, though, because I know that, you know, African women, everybody shares that experience. You know, your parents will tell you, oh, you know, you should don't sleep around, especially if you're, you know, a lady. Right. And um, was was that the only reason? Was there like a faith reason? Like. You know, I know you also mentioned about your church and all of that. Was it a personal decision that you made to honor God with your body, or was just was it just more a, more of a cultural expectation for you? Would you say it was a cultural expectation or something? So it was not a cultural expectation thing for me, in honesty, okay. because uh, which <laughs> which culture this the culture uh, is in this culture that you see people still misbehave. For me, also, mm -hmm. it was a thing of faith. I think that for the mom thing, it was the early stages of my life. But when it, when okay. I began to get into relationship, I knew that it was God that has given that um, instruction that um, bed on the foul, the bed should mm -hmm. be on the foul. So it was me saying that, oh, if um, God has given this instruction, why not? Um, I should be able okay. to obey the instruction one and then it was okay. also me saying that if God could have helped my mom yeah mm -hmm. because for children one other thing we that is easy to walk by is role models so if God yeah. could have helped my mom God will also help me so it's an instruction okay. instruction unto God you know however mm -hmm. I also had a role model in my life that was there mm. to guide me and at the time when the, uh, my, the role model was not there with me i knew that it was an instruction that i need to keep and the instruction is as unto the lord so yes it was it is it, unto god honestly okay so um as you continued like in your journey i know you mentioned like it was difficult and all of that is there any particular experience you'd share I, especially because i have comments like oh in short in the last video i had today this particular guy his name i think is olo something he literally was going through all my comment section leaving comments about how you know women should not wait and how it kind of you know reduces your prospects and all of that and i wonder if you ever had an experience like that you know was there any fear in you that you know maybe you won't get married quickly especially because of this mindset that you know men are people who cannot control themselves did you have any experience you know dating um you know or inability to date because of your status was that your own story no so for me i didn't have any situation where um the, the, i mean i didn't date many people in my life 
and not glory mm. to God. So, but every time I was going to go into a relationship, for me, it was so important. It was very important. So that was like one of the first first conversations I was going to um, I will have with the person I'm going to a relationship with. I don't know if you get, mm. and I didn't have a lot of relationships before my husband uh, maybe once one or it wasn't that serious so i didn't have a lot of it so as soon as i start a relationship with somebody i'm also i'm already mentioning that so i'm a virgin this conversation this cannot happen um during the time of our relationship uh mm. yeah so i it's okay. it's even when i met my husband even when i and my husband started dating that was mm. one of the conversation i also needed to have even if i know that he was a brother in church though. so <laughs> i think that it for me it wasn't a situation and i know that the, what you have said people have experienced it before people mm -hmm. ha have had um relationship and then the guy is saying that oh i can't wait or i need to test it i i remember having so um some of those kind of conversation in the past where the person is telling me that the person was not asking me out just like talking to an older brother in adubo i don't know if you get like if you mm. stay like mm -hmm. i mentioned i stayed in ondo so you have people that stay in the environment like the yeah, town man. together so and they're like an mm -hmm. elderly person to you but they're not married or something they, they would just say oh i can't date a lady that is not uh that i don't have not slept with so i, I mm -hmm. know that there are some men that have that kind of mindset and mm -hmm. i know that there are some women that would have come across those kind of situation but for me honestly i didn't have that any um and then mm -hmm. i wasn't in those kind of situations okay yes, that's awesome and i think you you know you've also retreated something that you know i think my previous guests also spoke about and even bolaji you know that you have to date purposefully and i love what you said about i didn't date a lot right and that's always advice that you know it's always better for you to be friends and discover if you can spend the rest of your life with a person than for you to be trying to be in, in one relationship to the other because that's where compromises yeah. start right so you were clear mm -hmm. about your goals you were clear about what you will water on the things you will not compromise on in your relationship and you make sure that you and the person will on the right you know page or on the same page before you move that head with the relationship and that's something i keep on hearing right so when i see christians who are always saying oh you know guys don't want to again it boils down to what kind of guys are you going after yes. or what kind of Where guys is coming to guys? you <laughs> exactly where are you seeing them people don't want to date in church because they feel like oh you know church boys church boys you go to the world and you want to drag the world to the church it takes a lot of energy and i'm not saying it's impossible but you know i always say make sure they are already in church before you decide to go you know to walk the eye with them and all of that but anyways thank you so much for shedding light on that so let's move into you know meeting your husband you know then getting into your wedding and then having the sexual experience you know how how was the experience for you how was that for you and how did you know i know when we're talking you were talking about you know how ignorance can be a factor you know after you get married and then you're about to do it without no having knowledge or let us even start from you know maybe you can even start from there what was the knowledge or what was the um knowledge you had about sex before you got into marriage and how did that affect you you know when you got into that just tell the story okay so let me start from meeting my husband um we went to i and my husband were um fellowship members hello fellowship yeah. um, <laughs> brothers mm -hmm. and sisters in fellowship christian union mm -hmm. uh so mm -hmm. we used to do um, um executives when in my school um christian union yeah, but uh, when they pick um, executive, they are, we used to have retreats. So one of okay. the retreats, you need to, um, um, they'll give you like 31 or 32 questions. You write down the questions and every, if every individual comes to the middle uh, and then you begin to answer those questions. So I remember when it got to my husband's son, they were like, oh, um, my husband has a lot of female friends. Uh, so, mm. and they were bombarding me, him with questions why do you have a lot of female friends blah 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 you know they were asking so and then they called this they were not like you need somebody here to assist you in that part i don't know if you get so um mm. i was his assistant assistant officially okay. so he was the gen sex <laughs> christian union i was the assistant gen sex christian um gen, assistant gen sex 
in the Christian Union at the time. So they were mm -hmm. like, oh, you need somebody to, to uh, uh, help you guide that path you get so mm -hmm. i since i was the assistant hello what am i supposed to have been assisting me with <laughs> so <laughs> I, okay so I, from I, assistant I, to to partner yes. partner life partner yes partner <laughs> in the lord <laughs> so <laughs> i will call him just to check up on him we'll chat you know i just mm -hmm. wanted to know if he was not just fine i wanted to know this the ladies in this corner so I was always around mm. here. I think that was where we be, we um, became very close, even while in school. Mm. So we're very close and all of that. So if I got to a point where my aunts would be like, ah, as your husband not, as Matthew not asked you out. I don't know <laughs> if you get, because we're so mm. close. There was a time mm. where I was not feeling fine. I, if you, in Lagos, he was in Ikorodu. I was at um, mm. Aweyaya in Aja. He came out, wow. I was not feeling fine, and then they called him the following day. My, <laughs> my husband showed face in our uh -huh. so, uh, and at the time, we were just brothers and sisters, there was nothing attached mm. to it. So, in the, Lord. We, we, mm. in the Lord, yes, <laughs> but he, he showed, yes, in the yeah. in fact, there was a day somebody took me out, and my uncle came back home. I was asking him, and he said, Somebody else took me out. He was like, Why <laughs> that? <laughs> Why that? Why am I going out to somebody else? Manti has to not tell him that they are just friends, so that the brother has <laughs> not said anything. <laughs> so people already fighting for him before go marry. Okay, so that was how we, wow. we started, and then doing mm -hmm. NYC asked me how to pray about it, and then we started dating. I think 2017 was when we started dating. We got married in okay. 2019. So, like That's I nice. said, I spoke to him about the fact that, sir, I am a virgin and I would not want to have um sex or whatever before the marriage honestly marriage. my own virginity was even i'd not even kissed a man before <laughs> like kiss i'd mm -hmm. not kissed a guy before he was the first mm -hmm. person i would i i kissed so um and then we got married so um mm -hmm. i remember doing my and you've been married for four my, years right we've been married for three 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 years and so we married we we're married 2019 december 14 okay. and this is yeah so three years plus now okay so when we when we before we got married in my church global harvest global mm -hmm. harvest church we have a um what do we call it we have a counseling that they do for people that are going to get married but for when it comes mm -hmm. to the part of sex they take you to the counselor's house so it's just you and your spouse I'll be having that counseling so we have like maybe plenty mm -hmm. of people that want to get married but when it comes to that part for sex it so mm -hmm. we went there they told us the, they explained to us but i never sat down one day to read anything about this thing called sex mm -hmm. you get i didn't go online to read anything i uh, i just know that i used to hear people say oh it's painful and mm -hmm. uh it will not happen the first day i don't know if you get so i just hear stories yeah. that oh it's painful it will not happen so that was what just it was in my head that okay when we get married we're going to do all of this but it's painful and it will not happen mm -hmm. the, <laughs> the first <laughs> night so i didn't read so, i didn't ask for why that do question. you think you did not pursue knowledge in this aspect why why what do you think the reason is so honestly i just i don't know why i didn't um reach or ask um important questions about mm -hmm. it uh it never crossed my mind that it was going to be a challenge mm -hmm. <laughs> you okay. see it never crossed my mind that i would need to read about it. i just thought that when we get married it will happen and you then it it's out. not going to be a yes when we i exactly will figure it out so i didn't think that it was going to be a stress on or anything ma mm -hmm. Finally, <laughs> when we got married on the Saturday night, we tried yeah. it. But the thing says, mm. stop there. You're not going to happen. <laughs> I'm not joking. We stayed for almost one month uh, mm. before we could finally, finally. One <laughs> month. Do do do? One month. One. To penetrate? It Is was that what like you're one saying? year. Yes. Wow. <laughs> I, so I prayed what was about it. Like? What, fact, it? what exactly was the issue? <laughs> so that's what i'm saying because mm. i didn't read about it my mind mm. i don't know my mind maybe my mind was not um ready for it or i don't know how to mm. explain it but i know that 
when we start when we said trying the first night we tried mm. uh, the following day we spoke to our counselor our mentor and she said oh you need this they told us before in counseling when they asked us so we told they told us we need um ky gen so we said okay mm -hmm. yeah so lubricant yes so we went to get it on the, like the sunday so that we can mm -hmm. try so sunday we tried and then we um it could not finally penetrate so i think on sunday was when i felt the real real pain but so <laughs> every time i just cry or i make noise i i, I am crying <laughs> about it my husband will just say ah my leg my leg he's just going to leave me ah when my mom heard it, my mom was like, Oh, share me, oh, ah, what's your mom, mom, my head, share it, you want to my shit. Oh, um, my god, <laughs> you know. So, we were trying and trying. I think another yeah. thing is, and that's one thing that one of the things I want to advise couples that I'm going to get married and as virgins. I think mm. that one very thing that is important is honeymoon. For us, we didn't mm. go for a honeymoon, we just did the wedding and then we went, came home. So because mm -hmm. we came home, we needed to cook for ourselves, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, we were doing a lot of things during the day, and then it's just during at night that we try again, or we try, mm -hmm. yeah, when, you know. But if we had gone for an, a like honeymoon, if we had gone for honeymoon, we'll know that mm -hmm. that is the job opportunity that we have collected. <laughs> you know, we would have done it money. Yeah. I don't know if you get me. Yeah, my honeymoon might be preferred. It got to a point where I had to resume um, back to work. And then mm -hmm. you know when you just get married, you go to work, and everybody's saying that um, assumes ah, OT, <laughs> ah, and you know, and they're saying this thing, and I'm just looking at myself. Uh, Vicky, mm -hmm. I had to go to one church around my house to go and pray because I was thinking <laughs> that something wrong with me. I'm not joking. It was so bad. Yeah. I was like, God, what mm -hmm. is it? What is it about this pain that I cannot just close my heart to? You know, it was mm -hmm. so. Ah, it was just that bad and then oh, one yeah. thing is that when you begin mm. to think about se sex your mind just begins to get um oh it's Scared. going to be stressful that's what we just mm. yeah you're going to be i'm afraid and all of that mm. so we need to as newly wedded people very importantly honeymoon it's very important because people just mm. feel like it's luxury for people getting married as virgin is not luxury so we tried and tried we tried different th different uh, styles and all of that but thankfully it finally happened i also wanted to know like was there anything that you guys did differently or did it just happen one month later so for us we continue to try and then we we're talking about it now so now i knew mm -hmm. that i was trying actively uh we use more we use the lubricant and then we did mm -hmm. so we did a different style compared to what we we're doing before we found a different vocation <laughs> all the do must do the, the, <laughs> the composing thing is that a way must be made <laughs> in mm. the wilderness so we found a different mm. um space and then we spoke about it even as husband and wife uh we spoke to yeah. our mentor because that, that's uh, actually the as, next as, thing as, that i wanted to ask because i believe that communication is very important especially when it comes very to important. issues like this yeah i was wondering did you and your husband you know talk about the act before you got married so for us no we didn't have that conversation um before um, okay. marriage so but we we're just always saying that okay uh, when we our first mm. night my, my mom will always see them like oh our first night we will have sex you know and i'll be like oh we'll be tired and all of that so we didn't say deep deep we didn't have deep conversations you know before that and i think that that's one of those things that also mm. affected okay. um and made the delay made the long time before we finally mm -hmm. were able to have it it's very important to talk about it before you even get married i think that he's not just talking about so for us where we only had that kind of serious conversation was when we we're talking to our mentors so our mentor the uh, mommy will always was mm -hmm. she would just mention it and say ah elishenia anywhere you know those kind of conversations so it wasn't we didn't have like a deep a <laughs> deep conversation as regards what i'm expecting mm. what i was expect so for my in my mind i just felt like when we get married mm. we try we'll do it that since that's what we have been waiting for we are finally here so we did so we didn't have 
a serious conversation about yeah. that. Yeah, I understand that, and I can relate to that. Um, well, the way we talked about, I think we over talked about it. Okay, <laughs> but I know that a lot of people that I've counseled also talk about, you know, the fear of not talking about it. Right? Like, if we talk about it, then we'll do it. If we talk about it, then you know, it's going to happen. Then our body will be what, 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 and all of that. So I understand, you know, the legit you know um concern that people have but you know when you are about to get married and i've said this before i have questions to ask i have things to discuss conversation guides on this channel right so you look at those you talk about you know the technicalities of it and you know prepare yourself prepare your mind so that you know that okay this thing is not a rush it's not a sprint it's something that we need to take our time this is how you can help me this is what i need to do so that it doesn't become a shock when the time comes and that's why i dedicate a lot of content here because knowledge is important even just knowing that okay oh i'm not broken because to me and i know you also mentioned something like that that you know uh, at a point i started to feel like is something wrong with me i be am i broken i went that to csc ma csc my i do go to pray i'm not to joking because it seems to be like a joke <laughs> Yeah. I went to pray because mm. I was thinking, is something wrong with me? In mm. fact, my mentor called me to her place, um, like maybe in the third week. And mm. then she called me and was asking me that, ah, uh, do you have any, uh, when you, did you have any situation in the past? Like mm. any, Raped any or issue about trauma or mm -hmm. assault or something? Hey, I say, God, hey, this thing I've been waiting to do since OCD or trauma, you know? So because... Yeah. It's true. If you don't, if you, if you, if you, if what you're expecting, your expectation, mm. if your expectation is not met, you know, your mm. mind is, you will begin to go around everything and you will yeah. think that you have a situation. Mm. If you do not have a situation, I think that people should not be uh, afraid when we talk about our own experiences. There's no need to fear. fear. Yeah. There's no cause for alarm. Mm. Talk to your spouse yeah. about it. Get mm. comfortable in this kind of conversation. See, if you don't talk about it, maybe when you are in, in an indoor space, you can talk about it when you are outside. outside. Mm. You can talk about it in, in, when you are with um, your counselor. Mm -hmm. Be free. Talk about it. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. And everything that she has said, I think that you know, if you're waiting to get married, those are things that you need to put in mind. I remember for us, you know, close to our wedding, we that me, I was even like, we're a long, long, long distance, right? We started to talk a lot about, you know, what we'd like to do to each other. And we started talking about the things that would literally make your body shake. Because the problem is when your mind is already closed all this while, and I think Miriam, when I interviewed her, spoke about this, that you you close your mind to it, right? And then you get into marriage and you expect your mind to automatically just be in it, right? <laughs> So before days or weeks before your marriage, you start to talk about, you know, things that would awaken your sexual desire for each other. So that when you get there, the work is already half done. And then it will take you so long, mm -hmm. not to say that it will become easy because you talk about it, but it will make it easier, right? When you have conversations like that. Anyways, that's maybe a topic for another time. But um, thank you so much, um, Shell, for uh, for sharing this, um, your journey and all of that. I'm sure a lot of people have been blessed. And there's one thing that, you know, you mentioned about, um, you know, after you then get married, after you've been, how long did it take for you to stop, you know, feeling pain um, after you broke through? So I remember it was a Sunday morning when mm. the brethren of God were going to the church. We were also... <laughs> trying our things <laughs> oh i know the dates by the i know the dates my sister if you know what this thing did to me <laughs> God, no. so yeah. like a week before we tried we mm -hmm. tried and then there was a little bit of this uh, blood here and there mm -hmm. so i was even excited that oh finally oh, this has um mm -hmm. happened mm -hmm. i don't know if you get but mm -hmm. we tried again it didn't go through mm -hmm. however this Sunday we we were we we're going to go to church but we're not mm. going to our own church so we just the church we we're going to we were starting service longer okay so uh, later so we then we started trying we just tried randomly and guess what I don't know what we did differently that day mm. but it happened it was so painful it happened that day it happened in the morning I'm like hello please. <laughs> Can we do more and more with this morning? Oh, it's true. I like okay, yeah. it has happened. Like when it happened, I was like, mm -hmm. it has happened. I was asking myself, babe, are you are you are you inside? Are you <laughs> God? 
And I, no, it's yeah, a you good, okay. it. <laughs> and we tried it. We did it and we tried it. Even just that money, we did like maybe mm. more and more and more. Oh, mm. okay. You could come out. You could, it was painful. Mm. But that, that money, I was I could not feel the pain again. The pain because of the joy. passed. That one month was mm. the pain. It was just the excitement that, oh, it has finally happened. I was mm. so excited about it. So I was feeling pain, but I didn't know. So we tried and did it again. So when we're coming back from church, mm. I already tell him, I was like, ah, after coming back home. <laughs> Eh? Pressure. You know, we are gonna go again. We go pressure, fly pressure. <laughs> like we are going to go again in the mm. name of the Lord. Oh mm. no! <laughs> By the time we go home, and we wanted to try. Okay, so now was when I now started feeling the pain. It was like mm. it was like a sore or a wound that some mm -hmm. of times you go through, and then yeah. I could not, I could not do it this, that day again. Mm. But yeah, mm. so the pain was just there and there so we tried i just saw that when we want to um have sex um i know that i will feel i will feel pain i'll feel a mm -hmm. bit of discomfort i don't mm -hmm. think uh yeah discomfort and uh, yeah but now i have done it so i was prepared to go through every wall and every mountain with mm -hmm. it and then because my <laughs> husband and i had already waited for mm -hmm. a whole month before we could have mm -hmm. it the pain did not make any to me because you know that pain it is just in the penetration usually yeah once that you're in mm. so as yes once you are inside paradise mm -hmm. leave the pain the pain has <laughs> oh i'm in egypt immediately you cross the yeah. pain is in egypt so yeah. you it's so i just made up my mind that even if it's going to happen even if i'm going to feel the pain it's just going to be for just the penetration and all of that we continue to apply in our um, lubricant, lubricant in all of the period but so mm. i did not slow down and i think that that is one thing for that i would like to talk about is mm. the fact that virgins virgin sisters virgin um brides mm -hmm. i think that even when you feel the pain the pain should not be a hindrance to having pleasure mm -hmm. with your husband mm -hmm. and then it should not also be a stumbling block in depriving your husband of that joy and all of that enjoyment if this man has waited with you um throughout the dating and the courtship and all of that you know mm -hmm. the kind of um, excitement that runs through your mind mm -hmm. when it comes to things like this when mm -hmm. you feel the pain you know ensure that you put that pain at the back because mm -hmm. i've had situations where women say oh they are um they got married and then because of the pain Whenever they talk about sex, they just push it. Don't push it. It's not a good idea at all. Mm -hmm. Ensure that now that you are married, even as a virgin, even when you feel the pain, ensure that you talk about the pain. Yeah? Talk about mm -hmm. the pain. So that when he's even trying to do it, he knows that you are feeling pain. And you know, if he's the, the husband that God has purposefully given you, he'll be there to even love you on it. And you are feeling pain. Ah, sorry, oh, sorry, oh, you know? Ah, mm. sorry do you think we should stop we say no brother don't stop go ahead you know <laughs> so <brother>. ensure that <laughs> you know but yes yeah 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 <laughs> ensure, mm. ensure that you do not because you hear stories of women that are that got married as virgin and then the sex life even after um the penetration and all of that now mm. becomes very boring even the man that is teaching you on the altar they like so if you are married as a virgin don't use that as a um, hold to say oh i don't like sex no open your mind to it pray about yeah. it. if you need to read about it read about it if you need to talk to uh, a, a a mentor a older couple about it go ahead and talk you see you need to just equip yourself now that mm -hmm. you know that this is a job opportunity that god has given you i have to do god job with <laughs> thank you okay thank you so much i really appreciate that um just to add to that also i know that for some people it's also it can be you know a medical issue so you know if you have a genius moss where you know it's difficult i know a couple that waited like one year before they were able to penetrate um you know just to buttress you know um Sean's point that you know it's not only penetration that it's sex and i always say this there are a lot of ways that you both can satisfy each other without doing penetration so 
that's why I said, you know, educate yourself, right, on how to please each other, you know, so that even whilst you're trying to recover from the pain, you know, she mentioned something that, you know, in case you are in that situation and you, you eventually go through it and, you know, there's the excitement and everything and then you're about to start again because that happened to me and then you realize that, oh, you're sore and sore is like a wound. You have to allow it to heal before you start over again or less or else it's going to take a longer time for you to heal. So there's I always advise take a day break you know during that day break doesn't mean you don't do anything you look for other ways to pleasure yourself that doesn't necessarily require yeah. penetration okay so um yeah that is very important and watch other videos on this channel i'm sure it will be super helpful to you so thank you so much Sheon. this has been such a great conversation so i want to also talk about foreplay um hmm. one thing that i also have found out is that um, sisters that got get married as virgins or virgin brides, they they are so rigid mm -hmm. sometimes. So take for example me. I remember mm -hmm. the night when we did the wedding the wedding night, and my husband helped me remove my wedding gown, but I immediately rushed into mm -hmm. the bedroom when I wanted to bathe. He came there and opened the <laughs> door, and I was like, ah, ah, "What are you doing here?" You know. I was still shocked. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> and the both of them were and they were naked and they were not ashamed. That was I'm not ashamed. So I what, like your husband. <laughs> so he, <laughs> and then he left. So we bind every spirit of shame. We bind it. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, uh, so when we get married as virgins, we become sometimes we are just normal. We are rigid because we have closed our minds, like your former guest mentioned. So when you get married mm -hmm. as virgins, it's important to be free. I think that for play, play with your spouse, play rough, play mm. like children. Mm. But, you know, it this for play helps to even awaken the whole of your body, and it also helps to prepare your body mm. for the actual act. Play, do anything. Mm. See, is is our body now? Your body is my body. My body is your body. So you can play mm -hmm. with the with mm -hmm. your body. You don't touch any part of the body. Um, just about it. Laugh play make you know another thing is to um, create a conducive environment for uh, for yourself you know ensure that there's no fighting there's no anger there's no issues around if whenever as you are trying to have the sex ensure that when there's a situation trash it almost immediately let the brother touch you touch the brother yeah. another thing that i want to say is that women can you know ask their husband for sex women can you know Go, go ahead. Yeah, don't mm -hmm. always wait that you should be the one to done, especially for virgin brides. Thank you so much for sharing that. I mean, I cannot overemphasize this. For play is important. There is a reason why it's called for before the play. Yes. So make sure that you you know implement everything that she has spoken about and a lot of things that i've also spoken about here if you watch most of my videos about you know wedding night and all of that most of it is centered around playing with yourself and it's not just about sexual things i cannot count how many times you know rough play yeah, stop tickling like me children. stop touching me here yeah, leave yes. me alone don't touch me <laughs> this and that has led to the other room i can't count it my so sister. yeah those are you know learn to play <laughs> with each other <laughs> learn to be playful right that really helps you to be relaxed right i shot ah hey there's one instance that's coming into my mind but if i say it is too gory my husband won't like it okay so <laughs> anyway so yeah watch out for the next episode of unashamed and we'll continue thank you so very much thank um show for this conversation this has been wholesome i'm sure a lot of people have been blessed and i am so blessed and grateful to have you here thank god bless you, you thank you and even for you know uh uh um accommodating my tardiness today thank you so much i am thank so grateful all so right guys so remember to like this video share this video with your friends and family let me know what you think in the comment section below what is your thought about this video do you have can you relate in any way to this video um yeah so i'll be looking forward to that remember to like this video leave a comment share this video and we'll meet again in the next one if you have not subscribed please make sure that you do so but anyways until we meet next time my name is still remain victoria i thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one okay bye, bye. bye. bye.